Hey everyone, so today's video is gonna be an unboxing of the Becker CPA review course. So many people consider Becker to be the gold standard in the CPA review course industry. So I wanna be digging into their platform today and just giving you a unboxing experience. And so please subscribe to the channel because I will be doing further in-depth reviews of Becker and all the nitty gritty details that you need to know before making an investment in Becker CPA review. So with that being said, let's get on with the unboxing of Becker CPA Review. All right, so welcome to the Becker CPA Review website. So Becker is fairly famous in the industry. So they're one of the very first CPA review courses to exist way back, I believe that back in the 50s, their founder, Newt Becker, was one of the first instructors for the exam. And they make some very bold claims about 94% of their users who are exam day ready pass a CPA exam, but there is a little bit, a little asterisk there, and they do rely on self-reporting from their users. They admit that the results are probably skewed. So whenever a CPA review course publishes a pass rate, one, I would be a little bit hesitant because obviously there's no auditors that are out there that are verifying that this is a real number. And there's also a marketing incentive to have a CPA review course with the highest pass rate. I would take this with a grain of salt. Now, granted, I do work with a lot of people who use Becker. They definitely get good results when they have somebody to teach them how to use the platform, how to study, how to manage their time and so forth. And if you're curious about CV exam mentorship and tutoring, I'd love to work with you. We do have what's called Kessler CPA review, and it's designed to help enhance how you use Becker, because as you'll see during the unboxing, there's not a whole lot of help in terms of the soft skills that are required. So how do you schedule? How much time do you need based on your situation and so forth? But with that being said, let's dive into the Becker CPA review platform. And today I'm going to be looking at the, I believe they call it pro plus version of the platform. Okay. So welcome to the Becker CPA review platform. So this is the dashboard. You're going to be spending a lot of time here going over all the different features. So there's a home, there's a study planner, there's practice tests, flashcards, final review, and then the performance area. And then you can search by question ID to find a specific question if necessary. So. During the unboxing, I'm gonna be going through each and every one of these tabs. So the first thing to understand is that Becker CPA Review, they want you to be exam day ready. What does that mean? They expect you to watch at least 80% of the lectures. They want you to get 80% of the multiple choice and simulations correct and 50% correct answers on the mini exams and simulated exams. So does this guarantee that you will pass the CPA exam if you hit these goals? And the short answer is no, definitely not. So what you need to understand is that passing the CPA exam is all about grasping the material. If you just blindly watch the video lectures, if you just blindly go through all the multiple choice questions and try to get as many of them correct as possible without grasping the material, understanding why each question is correct, then it doesn't really matter how many questions you've done or how well you've done on the mini exams. You're gonna have a hard time on the real CPA exam. So that's why it's so important before you even start studying to have somebody teach you how to study, how to make sure you're grasping the material instead of relying on the statistics, which just forces you to get answers correct and find the quickest answer as quickly as possible. That's the quick disclaimer here before diving into Becker CPA review is that the exam day ready is a great goal to achieve but you really got to make sure you're understanding what you study because that's ultimately what's the most important thing. Okay, so let's start with the study plan. Let's dive into that. So go ahead and create a plan here. So we'll start with FAR and then typically I recommend audit or BEC and then end with reg. So we'll just assume that this is the order that we take. But again, the goal of passing the CPA exam, and this is something that I tell all my mentees, is to be flexible. So start with, pick one of these four. It doesn't matter which one necessarily. Typically I recommend FAR first just because it is the biggest monster out there. So pick that section, see what happens. Do you pass? Do you fail? If you fail, then you need to retake FAR as quickly as possible. If you pass, then obviously you need to jump into your next section as quickly as possible and so forth. So again, it's all about remaining flexible, not necessarily looking at all four sections as one big exam. So that's a little pro tip there. So we'll go ahead and move on to the next section. So let's go ahead and so it's July. So with FAR being so large, I do recommend typically if you're working full time, you'll want to give yourself about 10 to 12 weeks. So we'll go ahead 
And so it's July now. So we got or July, August, September, October. So we'll, we'll go ahead and do October 10th. That'd be a good day for that. The rest of the sections, we don't know because we don't know if we're going to pass far or not. So we'll go ahead and say, I don't know. And then we can go ahead and the customization feature here. So typically if you're working full time, we do recommend closer to 20 hours a week, get as close as possible because again, high intensity is much better than long extended studying where you're not going to feel any pressure to get studying done. So definitely err on the side of studying more than you think possible. So for this, we'll go ahead and say 25 to 30 hours. That's very aggressive, but if you can hit 20 hours, you should be able to be just fine. And then we'll just go ahead and pick today as a start date. And then we'll go through, make sure everything looks good. Confirm go on to the next step. And then here is going to be our calendar update. So then there'll be some simulated exams and then exam day. All right. And the study plan is complete. So now we're ready to get started. Okay, so now back to the home page. Now that the study plan is set up, then the way that Becker structures everything is that you're gonna go in a linear fashion through the material, starting with F1, which is like chapter one, essentially. And then for financial accounting reporting, it looks like there are going to be 10 chapters. And then within each chapter, there's gonna be individual modules. And so something to be aware of is that the, the AICPA blueprints, so this is the, the structure that the AICPA ha releases to all the test prep providers, They're giving you a list of everything that's actually tested on the exam. And so what Becker has done is they've chosen not to go in order of the AICPA blueprints. So they give you little cheat sheets of where to find the, where this particular blueprint is being tested. For example, there's chapter one, module two, chapter one, module eight, chapter two, and then module two and so forth. There is a little bit of a cheat sheet here just to make sure that you're getting full coverage of the blueprints. And if you end up using a service like Kessler CPA Review, we do have study supplements that are tied exactly to the blueprints here. So this will allow you to connect Kessler CPA Review to the exact module within Becker that's being tested and so forth. It's a cool little cheat sheet here that I definitely recommend you get familiar with before you start studying. Okay, so now it's time to start studying. So go ahead and scroll down on your homepage here to the next step. So you can click on F1. And so this is going to give you your, all the different modules. So there's lectures, there's multiple choice questions that are tied to each individual module. And sometimes there's simulations that are added in and then supplemental questions as well. So a quick pro tip here, Becker does recommend that you watch all the lectures, but you'll notice that this lecture is one hour and five minutes. So I don't know about you, but if I was to sit down and watch a one hour long video, I'd fall asleep pretty quickly. So another option for you is to utilize the pre-annotated ebook. So if you're somebody more like me who prefers to self-study, I might start in the pre-annotated ebook, read through it, see if I grasp the material well enough, and then go test myself with the MCQs and see how I do. So again, it's all about finding the most efficient way for you to study. So some of you, it's gonna be watching that lecture. You'll really grasp it. You'll take copious notes while watching and it will all stick to you. But again, it's all about finding the right way to study. And if that's something that you struggle with, there is a free quiz that I put together. It's a free study personality quiz. You can find it at freecpaquiz.com. It's gonna help identify how you learn best, what study resources I recommend based on your situation and your learning style that I recommend that you put as a priority. And so when you use a textbook first, if there's something that doesn't make sense to you, there's always the option to jump into the lecture and make sure to get some more professional guidance on it as well. So again, make Becker work for you. You don't have to watch the lectures first if you don't want to. You can start in the textbook. You can start in the questions first and then go to the source material. Whatever works best for your situation, that's what I recommend that you do. And again, yes, it's great to hit 80%, but if you don't, then that's fine too. Again, it, the whole goal here is to grasp the material as quickly as possible. That's a little pro tip here from somebody who's mentored over 2000 CPA candidates over the years that just because Becker recommends that you watch a lecture first doesn't mean that you personally need. So that just from personal experience, I know that this is true. Okay, let's look at the pre-annotated notebook real quick first. So typically what Becker does is they'll walk through the textbook. So here is their e-textbook. 
And then the lecturer is going to highlight, underline, and point out the most important things from the textbook. So as you can see here, it gets pretty messy pretty quickly, but it is nice to have a professional lecturer walking through the material in a video format as well. So let's take a look at a video now. Okay, so here's module one. So as you can see here, we have a little bit of a playlist that is broken down by page. And then we end with a question and a question explanation, which is pretty cool. And so you'll notice that the video is not a necessarily a talking head. They do have a little bit of that, this little, the intro here. So when you get to, to meet the lecturers, but the majority of the video lectures will be walking through the actual textbook itself. So if you have the physical textbook, you can follow along and do all that sort of fun stuff. But again, it is about a 60 minute lecture just for one module. So again, these are longer form lectures and you can leave individual notes on the lecture itself. But unfortunately, Becker doesn't have a one place to find all of your notes. So they're tied individually to each module. So if you're going to be using these notes, there, there really isn't much use outside of actually individually going into the individual module itself and then rereading your notes and so forth. And other platforms, they typically have a one place where all your notes are compiled in one place so that you can use it as more of a to-do list or just one place to see all of your to review all at once. I don't know if I would necessarily use the digital notes. I'd probably be taking physical notes at this point or using an iPad or something like that to with the iNotes or so, something along those. You can also make your own highlights on the text itself and it will save within the platform as well. So if you want to do your own annotating, that is definitely something that you can do as well. Let's see here. I believe there's a way to speed up. Yeah, you can add subtitles. So we have English or Chinese subtitles. We also have different varying speeds. So if you're somebody, who, if you just want to run through the lectures as quickly as possible, it definitely is understandable at about 1.5, 1.25. That's typically what I do whenever I'm listening to a podcast or something like that. And it's a great way to save a little bit of extra time. But again, these are long form videos. So if you're more of a, a self-studier, you can read the textbook and then know if one page is, has a bunch of stuff on it that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It's nice to know that you can go into page seven and find a professional lecturer that hopefully digs into it deeper than you can figure out on your own. Okay, and I'll give you, let's I'll listen a little bit to one of the lectures just so you can get a, a, an instructor idea of what Becker pr professors are like. Now, in the instant qualitative characteristics, box off the work, now we already covered what are the primary qualitative characteristics of useful information that be relevant, reliable. Okay, so those are the primary qualitative characteristics. What now? Those qualitative characteristics secondary to the and so you can actually turn on the instructor notes on and off so that you can follow along and highlight as you go but personally that's not something that i enjoy doing and i don't find a whole lot of value in just following along and highlighting what they recommend but again it's personal preference you need to figure out what works best for you okay so now that you understand the lecture mode let's go ahead and do some sample multiple choice questions okay so the becker platform it looks Similar to what you're going to see on the real CPA exam, it, they definitely took a lot of, uh, a little bit of changes to maybe make it a little bit easier with their platform to use than what you'll be seeing on the real CPA exam. So I do recommend that you take one of the official AICPA practice exams so you can understand the real format so you're not thrown off whenever you walk into the Prometric Center. But you got the standards, you've got your calculator here, you can take notes on the individual question itself, you can print the question off and then I don't know if they'll have, oh, they do have a, a simple spreadsheet tool that's similar to what you're going to have on the real CV exam, which is kind of, cool. okay. So then there's also academic support built into each question. So you can submit questions to their academic support and they'll get back to you. It is a bit of a pain because they require you to fill out a lot of information. You definitely want to make sure that you're using the right email address and then include the MCQ number, which Let's see, where do you, oh yeah, there it is, MCQ and this particular number there. Another annoying thing about Becker I've noticed is that you can't copy and paste anything. So when you try to select anything, it's a little bit difficult. So you're almost gonna need to memorize this MCQ number when it, plugging it into the academic support. So it would be nice if when you clicked on this button that it would auto fill all that information in, but that's not the case. So you'll just have to remember 8726 and plug it in. Okay, so I do that Becker CPA review. They provide you with the correct answer 
why, and then why the other answers are incorrect. It would be nice if they gave you a bit more information than this. Maybe it'd be nice if they gave a bit of an overview or some, I've noticed some of their explanations are a bit thin, but you, you definitely want to understand why the question is correct and why the question is incorrect. And then it is cool because they do tie in the video lecture with a little button here and it will take you exactly to where this particular question is quizzing you. So that is a handy feature to be able to quickly go back to the video lecture, to the source material and do additional research there. Okay, and you can also mark the question, bookmark it. There's also some additional analytics here. It's like, how much time per question are you spending? How much time total, which is great for planning for the real exam. It also tells you the skill level that you're being quizzed on, which is pretty neat as well. So if you're familiar with the blueprints, particular questions, the more advanced questions like the test-based simulations, those will test you on application and analysis and so forth. Okay, let's see here. What else? And you can hide all that information. And yeah, I think that covers everything from the quiz perspective. So yeah, so you just keep clicking through. You'll learn to hate this yellow color and learn to love the green color. Even back when I was using Becker, they used the same colors. And it's, it's funny how you, you crave that green color after a while. Okay, so that's enough sample questions. Let's go ahead and end this and then look at what happens next. So we got one correct, four incorrect, and then it got some additional time statistics there. Okay, so once you've completed your initial assessment over this particular area, you can, if you didn't complete them all, you can restart it by answering only the unanswered or incorrect questions. You can also look at your previous session to see your previous results. And then you can also look at the performance tab here. So we were in module one. So you can see that there's a total of 26 questions. I've gotten two correct so far and so forth. And then you can click on that and it'll take you back. So again, your goal shouldn't be just to get 80% of the questions correct. Your goal should always be to make sure you're understanding why the questions are right or wrong. So that's the goal here. But obviously this is a good overview of looking at individual modules being like, okay, I'm not doing, I've only gotten 8% of this particular module correct so far from the available questions. That's definitely an error area I should probably start focusing on, whether it's through the text or the video lectures and so forth. Just that's how the Becker system works is that you can use these percentages as a guide on knowing where to spend your time. Okay, so moving on to module two, I want to take a look at some of the simulations. So simulations are the next step up in difficulty for questions you may see on the real CPA exam. And so what's cool about Becker is that they provide what are called skill master videos. So you're going to be given a simulation. You can answer it all on your own. And then, so here's how they work. And this is very similar to what you're going to see on the real CPA exam. This is actually very close to it. So you're going to make your selection and then you can manually type in the dollar amount there and then show the solution once you're done. Okay, so let's go ahead and show the solution here. And so let's see here. So this is a. And then sell an administrative expense there. And some sale from equipment. Okay. So yeah. So obviously, Hey, look at that. I got one correct, but then I got the dollar amount incorrect and so forth. So now that you have a basic idea of what the correct solution is, now let's watch the skill master video. Hi everyone. My name is Michelle Nisha and we're going to go through this. And so this is a video walkthrough of the particular simulation that we just looked at. She brings in Excel showing her work, and it's just a great way to verify that you understand why each option is right or wrong. And so you can also bring in the different exhibits that are included. And so, yeah, you'll need to use all this to answer the question that is presented. So again, this is a really cool system. Some of the CPA review courses out there, they don't have videos explaining task-based simulations. So this is definitely a nice little bonus to have because again, task-based simulations, they make up 50% of your score. So it's good to have some additional guidance that is specific to questions instead of just reading and hoping you understand. Okay. So that wraps up the learning experience. There's a couple other things I want to touch on. So there is an outline here. So these are the little notes that outline exactly what's covered. I don't believe there's a way to print these off. Becker has everything fairly locked down, but it looks like you can download them. 
and then print them offset. And then, so this is a good way to go through and review. You can leave little notes on um, things that maybe you're struggling with. And then um, there's all sorts of things that you can do to annotate them and use them within the platform, which is kind of cool. And then there's also a glossary. So these are just basic uh, definitions um, that you need to know, um, which is a good reference tool as well. Okay, so let's keep moving on down the line. So there's also practice tests. So these are ways for you to study specific areas. And so I think that they have the primary chapter and then the individual modules below. So like I was mentioning before, say you are, you've learned several chapters now and you want to go back and review everything up to this point. Well, you don't want to review everything because some things you do have a strong understanding of. So the best thing to do is to look at your percentages here and identify areas where you're lower. So for example, M6 from chapter one, I'm super low. Let's do F2, M1 as well. And then we can do M2. So when you create a practice quiz, it can be very targeted, which is a very good idea to do. So you don't want to test things that on your own that you already understand. So I don't even remember those numbers now, but we'll go ahead and say M5. And I know M1 and 2 were included as well. And then we can do 50 questions, however many you want. So we'll do 10 and then we'll include one simulation as well. So this is just a quick review. Um, so they do have personalized, so like the adapt to you learning. So you're going to receive a unique set of questions for selected units personalized to the areas in which you need to improve your proficiency. So that's one way to do it, or you can do random and then pick the question type and then the specific kind. And then here you go. So you've got the uh, multiple choice question. And so you'll notice also that this is the actual CPA exam format, depending on when you're in learning mode, the format is going to be a little bit different, but then when you're in practice test mode, it's going to look more like real CPA exam, which makes sense. And you'll also notice that you don't get the answer right away but you can still reference the lecture, calculator, Excel, and so forth. And then there's also a help button. All right, so let's answer this one and get to the simulation. Is there a simulation in here somewhere? Ah, Tesla 2. Okay, so then here's the simulation. And you can answer that. Okay, and then we can end the test. Okay, so now once you're done with the practice quiz, it's going to give you a detailed report here. So it's going to give you the question ID for each question, the unit it's from, the module it's from, and then uh, the time spent, and then if you got it correct or incorrect, which is pretty neat. Um, and then when you click through, it's going to show you in review mode the actual question itself. Um, you can tie in the lecture, the glossary, you can print it, shoot a question to support, um, but it just gives you an easy way to uh, review everything um, from the practice quiz and see the full explanation right next to it. And then you can move on to the next one and the next one, and the next one. All right. So leave review. So this is definitely a step that I would not skip. So this is definitely very important to, again, understand why you got each question right or wrong. So even if you get a question correct, definitely spend a few moments just to make sure you understand why you got it correct. Cause sometimes you guess and get things correct for the wrong reasons and so forth. So again, very important there. Becker definitely gives you some good tools. And then if you start noticing trends, that, oh, M2 subsequent events, I'm getting incorrect pretty badly. Then you can go back and pop into the lecture, into the source material, make additional notes, do additional research and so forth. Okay, moving on, we'll take a look at flashcards. So flashcards by section, and then you can select units. Um, so the flashcard, you can't filter by in specific modules. So it's all within the chapter at the chapter level, uh, but it's still a useful review tool. So I wouldn't use it as a learning tool, but if you're going to, if you have some spare time, if you're on the Becker app, the mobile app, and you're standing in line at the grocery store or something, it's a great way to get some quick studying in on that. You know, it's definitely pretty easy to get through. It's a definition type experience. So we'll, they'll throw what is private company council. Then you flip it over and you can visualize it in your head and spout out the definition uh, silently. So you don't sound like a crazy person, but then you can get through and uh, you'll mark any flashcard you have mastered. You can master it. And then um, there is filters to uh, turn on random cards. Um, you can show both sides at the same time. Um, you can show all the cards you've mastered. So you'll definitely want to go through those every once in a while, just because just because you haven't mastered today, doesn't mean you'll have it mastered tomorrow and then the not mastered and so forth. So 
again, overall, a fairly useful review tool. I don't necessarily think I would use it as a learning tool. So the, uh, the questions themselves, the textbook, the lectures, those are probably better for learning. All right, moving right along final review. So this is definitely something that I would recommend using if you have access to Becker. Um, F1 is, so the final review is what you're going to be doing during the final 10 to 14 days before you sit for an exam. So there's some additional lectures giving you a high level overview of everything within F1. There's going to be some additional multiple choice questions, simulations, and ultimately the goal here is to give you a quick and uh, down and dirty way to get through all the material very quickly and um, just make sure that you still are retaining everything that you've learned in the early days and uh, keeping it straight for the final one. And so for each primary blueprint area, there's going to be uh, some additional lectures and MCQs and simulations. So it's like the high level important things you got to know before the exam, plus some bonus questions to test yourself. All right, guys. And then the final one is MCQ search and task-based simulation search. So if you have a specific question that you've contacted support with, but you can't find it easily, just go ahead, grab that question, pop it into here, and then you'll easily be able to find it and then get back to the source material and all that fun stuff. All right, guys. So that is the complete unboxing of Becker CPA Review. I hope you can subscribe to the channel. I'm going to be digging into the mobile apps in separate videos. I'm going to share what I like and don't like. I'll be digging into the online and uh, live classes, whether you should be using them and so forth and all that, the nitty gritty stuff that I didn't have time to discuss here during the unboxing. So hope you found this video useful. Let me know if you have any questions and check the video descriptions for all the links and resources that will help you make a purchasing decision. Thanks again for watching and we'll catch up with you in the next video.